I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. He has been helped into the White House by the evil of another nation, and yet all our politicians will do is promise reviews and committees whose words will be too measured and too late. And now, on top of all else, he will not listen to the daily intelligence briefings. I'm like a smart person, he said Sunday. Factually correct, incidentally. Perhaps like a smart person, but not actually a smart person. Quote, I'm like a smart person. I don't have to be told the same thing in the same words every single day for the next eight years. He will not attend the daily intelligence briefings. Quote, if something should change from this point, immediately call me. I'm available on one minute's notice. But he would not necessarily believe the daily intelligence briefings anyway. After the wave of reports about the intelligence agencies confirming Russia's intervention in our election, quote, these are the same people that said Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. No, actually, the intelligence agents kept insisting there was no proof of such weapons, and they kept having their reports thrown back in their face by the administration of a president who was like a smart person who knew better. Quote, the election ended a long time ago in one of the biggest electoral college victories in history. The electoral college vote has not happened yet. If no pledged elector changes his vote, his margin will be the 45th largest in history. In other words, the 12th smallest margin in history. But he knows better. He always knows better. A CIA conclusion that the Russians interfered with our sovereignty, our freedoms, our elections to help put him in office? Quote, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's just another excuse. I don't believe it. Who was the last president who would not listen to the daily intelligence briefings? How many Americans were killed because George W. Bush did not listen to the president's daily brief from the intelligence community? 2,997 on 9-11, 6,731 more military in Iraq and Afghanistan because what do you need intelligence for if you're like a smart person? And still it is worse because from all that we have covered in this space for three months, the day in October that Trump slipped and repeated the same mistaken attribution of a quote that a Russian propaganda site had made, the day his confidant praised WikiLeaks and intimated something bad was going to happen to John Podesta just before Podesta's hacked emails were released by WikiLeaks, all the evidence of Russia's personal manipulation of Trump through his cronies like Paul Manafort and Carter Page and Roger Stone and now through Vladimir Putin's pals like would-be Secretary of State Tillerson and the putrid Congressman Dana Rohrabacher, because of all of that and more, suggest that Donald Trump isn't just a stupid man's idea of what like a smart man would be. He is a man whose assumption that he has the inside information and everybody else is just guessing appears to be based on knowledge provided to him by Russia. The CIA said the Russians hacked Americans. You don't know that, he says, could be a fat guy. The CIA now says the Russians hacked to help get him elected. I don't believe that, and so what, I won in a landslide. What happens when the CIA next says, the Russians are absorbing Ukraine. What happens when the CIA then says Putin is so strong he's planning to take back Alaska? What happens when the CIA then says there's an imminent terrorist attack and it tracks back to Putin? What happens when the CIA finally says Putin's lost his mind and he's launching missiles? You don't know that, Trump says. I don't believe it. The people should know the truth. They should know that we have sustained a defeat without a war the consequences of which will travel far with us along our road. They should know that we have passed an awful milestone in our history when the whole equilibrium of representative government has been deranged and that the terrible words have for the time been pronounced against our democracy, thou are weighed in the balance and found wanting. And do not suppose that this is the end. This is only the beginning of the reckoning. This is only the first sip, the first foretaste of a bitter cup which will be proffered to us year by year, unless by a supreme recovery of moral health and martial vigor, we arise again and take our stand for freedom. Winston Churchill said that, more or less, in the British House of Commons, October 5, 1938, days after Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain at Munich gave the Sudetenland in Czechoslovakia to Hitler in exchange for a piece of paper. Chamberlain and much of the world thus thought he had guaranteed there would be no Second World War, just as supporters of Trump think they have guaranteed some kind of new freedom and, of course, more money for themselves. Churchill, and only a few others, 
knew that, in fact, Chamberlain had just guaranteed there would be a Second World War, just as those of us who recognize this Trump for what he is know that the voters have guaranteed themselves slavery, defeat, economic disaster, and the need to soon or late save this nation and restore freedom by extricating ourselves from a Trump regime by whatever process provides itself. Churchill was most prescient when he noted that Munich was only the beginning, just as we must recognize that the administering of the oath of office to Trump, an event to be resisted by any legal means, is only the first and smallest of a series of apocalypses. Because just as in Churchill's time, we too have a Hitler. No, it's not Trump. Not yet. Certainly not in this context, anyway. The part of Hitler in our sad reenactment of the months before the Second World War is played by Vladimir Putin. Trump? In this remake, Trump is Neville Chamberlain. He knows better. He can see the strength in the foreign leader. He knows how to make a deal. He can handle him. He can negotiate with him. He can hand him our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. He has already helped hand Putin our sacred right to vote. He will happily hand Putin a cleared path to the world domination he seeks for Russia. He will, just so long as Putin tells him he's making a great deal and he's like a smart person, he will hand Putin this country. Treason doth never prosper. What's the reason? wrote the British author John Harrington 400 years ago, and then answered it. Why, if it prosper, none dare call it treason. It's treason. Resist. Peace.